Ripple Impact. I'm your host, Shay Wheat, founder of Grace and Ease Productions, where we support entrepreneurs just like you with event-based marketing and sales strategies. And today, I want to know, perhaps you have possibly observed this reoccurring pattern in various workplaces you've been a part of, but there is just this lack of consideration towards customers. You know, businesses are really just seem to be focused on making sales and maximizing profits. And our guest today realized that he wanted to create a place where customers wouldn't feel like that, but they would have more of a community and be seen and heard, which is kind of like just ringing true to me in my ears because that's what we do with our events is helping our audiences be seen and heard. So today we have Zach Coleman who is with us today with a company that is just definitely success-driven, grit-focused brand agency. And he's also an expert in personal and corporate branding. Now he has helped countless professional athletes, personal brands, athletic-driven corporate brands to build their brands around community with this thought in mind. So I want to go ahead and welcome Zach to the Creating Powerful Impact stage. How's it going, Zach? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the cast. I really appreciate it. I'm I'm excited to have you because, you know, of course we all need to look at sales. We all have to look at maximizing our profits, but What I've seen in the marketplace, and it sounds like you have too, where like that seems to be the only focus and they kind of forgot why they started their businesses in the first place. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So would you mind, you know, talking to us a little bit about how that came about and, um, you know, why is it important for people to start going from personal brand to community brand and really diving back into that piece? Yeah, well, funny enough, I kind of, uh, to really push on this story, I kind of took, I kind of took a, a little different path. Um, I actually took the path of, of going straight to trying to build a corporate brand and not really looking back at myself and uh, taking that step backwards to grow myself first and foremost. I think that um, one of the biggest things, you know, a lot of people from the outside you know, right now would consider me successful. You know, I have a beautiful wife. I have two children. I have one more on the way. You know, I moved up quite fast in the corporate world before I, you know, to, grew this business. But I always felt like something was missing as I continue to grow my business. Uh, I I think that it's pretty common for most people to, um, especially when they're just starting out, like let's grasp at every little thing, see what works, see what's going on, like try to just bring in profits. And then next thing you know, you're this, you're this Frankenstein style business and you're making a good amount of, uh, money, but then you're, you're burnt out, you're all over the place. You realize, oh, I kind of lost my purpose, <laughs> you know, like I yeah. got to the point where I'm comfortable, I'm happy. And a part of it was, I, I I will be honest, was the birth of my children. I mean, I think that helped me kind of see see light in a different way because I think with the ever growing of online and everything going on, be, things just become so transactional. There's no human connection behind oh vendors, strategic partners. I mean, we work with a lot of gyms, and so there's this fine line with these gyms where they're like competing with all the gyms around them. And I'm like, Hey, like if you really focus on yoga over here, why aren't you partnering with this person over here? That's focusing on this because at the end of the day, your customers are your, are who you value, right? Like they're the ones you're trying to improve. And so um, I just started seeing it. and, And this is funny because I'm a branding agency, you know, I just started seeing that, you know, branding isn't about that logo, you know, it's not about that, you know, that tagline, it's not about that website. And if I have to hear one more time, a a prospect come to me and be like, we just need a website. It's like, okay, well, why? Like, what is the, what is the purpose? Yes, like, oh my gosh, same thing goes for my side of events. 
They're like, okay, we want to do an event. It's like, great. Why? What is the purpose and intention of the event? What is the promise of the event? Whether or not they do business with you, what are they gaining at the end of the event? Like, what are they walking away with? Mm -hmm. What's the out? What is the outcome? They have to come away with some sort of outcome. And that's how you really make a difference in the world. And I think no matter who you are as a business owner, um, I think that you get into, you think that you get into business because you're like, oh, more free time. Well, (laughs) I'll be, I'll be realistic with everyone. I don't have as much free time. In fact, in fact, I just have to be more strict about the things that I do so that I don't, you know, put myself in a burnout situation where I'm doing all the wrong things, you know? Um, and that's challenging, especially as you're growing and you're, you're trying so many different things, but, you know, I started to see this, I started to see this and it wasn't just, uh, there were certain uh, situations that happened in my business. You know, I was, I was at a point where, I don't know if many people know what the valley of valley of death period is, but you know, it is a period within business where you have to start really spending more money to make more money. You have to start creating more structure. You have to start doing certain things. And I had to really look at myself because I already hired a whole bunch of people, but I didn't really have any values in place. I didn't have anything personally that that uh, was was pushing me to create a vision for my team. It was just, okay, I was exactly what everyone thought that they wanted, which was, oh, I'm doing all this work for these brands, but I'm 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 not happy. And I couldn't figure out why why I still wasn't happy. And so I had to go on this journey of self-discovery and and personal growth uh, about you know a year, year and a half ago where, you know, yes, the money and the profits of the business was, of course, part of the reason why I'm like, why, why am I not growing as a business? But then part of me also had to look at it and be like, well, why does more money at this point matter? Mm. Why is that a success trigger for me still? Like, why, why does making that million, that, that 10 million, that 20, why is that something of success to me? And I feel like, that push and that drive that people have when they're like, oh, I have to follow what everyone else says and make it to a million dollars a year. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with with having a thrive to, you know, make more money and have goals towards it. But having just that be what defining makes you happy, I think, leads you to burnout because it takes a lot longer than you think it does. There's a lot more work than you think is involved. And so, like I said, I had to go through and I had to go through some self-reflection and funny enough, I work less now, (laughs) you know, I, I still work quite a bit, but I really put into consideration my, my, my spiritual and my personal and my family time and saying, all right, what, what makes me happy personally? And through going through some of those personal evolutionary traits of, oh, okay, like I'm spending an hour and and starting to time track going back and watching, you know, stuff that was in my control, like my health and my my time off and making sure I'm dedicating and not overthinking and of, of the business and spending time with my family when I'm supposed to, I was able to clear my head enough um, to kind of get to a point where I was like, aha, I, I no longer have really have to think about chasing that that dollar you know it's it's more about what other things are are going to make me happy and i think that that transition from personal brand to corporate slash community i always say corporate brand is all about you know we you know you're going from an i to a we which is your team you know and that's building your business around a team and that success looks like hey i want to help my employees and there's of course different goals involved but i want to help my employees grow as people like that's part of building that community and then you get to a point where you're like okay us like what is the whole reason for me doing this and that's what i really consider being a community brand is it's not going out and helping the community which i would say is still something that everyone should do in some way form or another but it's all about hey you're building a community your brand isn't just an essence of you. It isn't an essence of your team. It's an essence of your, of your clients, 
and making sure that they're happy and they're working together and they're getting the experiences they want um, out of out of working together because that's how you you as a person are contributing the best way you can to society. And it doesn't mean, like I said, going out and, and feeding the homeless or anything like that. Like I still need it if you want to do that. But uh, it's about, you know, finding what, what you're really good at. And instead of having that end agenda in mind of, hey, I'm going to go out and just try to make that next dollar. I have to sell this client. I have to sell this client. It's more of how can I help this client? Like how can, how am I going to make their lives better so that they can start contributing to society and yeah, grow that ripple effect. It right? comes that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, it all started off with that personal growth. And I actually realized through my development, like I said, I kind of had to go backwards. I didn't have my personal values in place. I'm like, what do I value? And what do I personally value? And so I had to kind of sit down and really figure out what is really valuable to me because as I was in the process of taking that next step to, towards hiring the right people that really fit um, the yeah. essence of our brand, I, I transformed those personal values into our brand values because at the end of the day, the business is only as strong as the leader behind it, you know? So-, so yeah. So, well, your team's not going to do more than you are, right? Like they're mm -hmm. going to just, you're the leader. So you're kind yeah. of like the cap and they see what it is that you're doing. And so if you're mm -hmm. like, oh, what up, right, uh, then they're going to have the same kind of values and attitude towards it as you. Now, my question next for you is you, you talk about the three pillars mm -hmm. uh, of like what it means and what it looks like to have a successful brand. Can you share with us like what those three pillars are and why they're important? Yeah, I kind of touched on them a little bit, but first and foremost, connection, you know, and I, I kind of uh, spiked on it a little bit and it's uh, understanding who you, who you truly are, like, who are you truly? And then being able to being able to intentionally connect with people in your life, in your business, in your brand, uh, the people around you that really match your connection with yourself, you connect with the, the people that are like-minded to you. And so it helps you attract. And from very simple terms, you could say that connection is, you know, it's that whole concept of, oh, as you evolve and you grow, you start attracting more people that are more like you it's that same concept but you have to be connected with yourself first you have to know who you truly are and what you truly want um so that you're able to allow yourself one to grow if you want to grow to stay a lifestyle business if you want to stay a lifestyle business but being able to connect with yourself so you understand your boundaries and you're either not over serving or just trying to make that dollar, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, well, and I, I think in that connection to yourself, you're also doing just that connecting to your ideal audience because yes. they, they're mm -hmm. like what it is that you're doing. They want a lifestyle that it is that you've got going on. They like your brand because of it um, and they want to be associated with it. Mm -hmm. So I think that connection goes both ways. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, it, it go it definitely goes both ways because as you start, you, you attract what you attract, what you do, you know, and one of uh, when I was early on in my business, I had a, I had a sales rep and one of the um, things that he, not really a sales rep, but a sales coach, he was teaching me how to get better at selling and, and talking to people. And one of the things that he did say that really resonated with me was, Hey, treat others like, you know, you want to be treated yourself, you know, don't, don't bash people. Don't do this. If, you know, people are coming to you and trying to, you know, sell you stuff or do stuff, be respectful and honest. And one of my key things is always integrity. So I do take it upon myself. If a company reaches out to me and I don't find that their services are needed right now, I'm just blatantly honest because I'd rather give them a no, because that's what I'd want. You know, um, so I will say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, this just isn't the right time. And then if they start being pushy, 
then I know right there that they don't match my values and I wouldn't want to do business with them anyway, you know? And so, uh, yeah, you have to kind of have that connection, you know? And then I think that one of the biggest ones that a lot of people, you know, even me, as we evolve as people start to really not really take for granted is, is building confidence, you know, building confidence in yourself helps you become a self leader. Um, like you said earlier, and become, building that confidence in yourself will start to showcase in everything that you do. Um, it will showcase in, and funny enough, it will showcase in your assets. It will showcase in the way you you develop a team. And so that confidence in yourself is, and like you said earlier, you have to lead by example, will help you start to bring in the right team if you want to bring team members in, the right partnerships. Um, and then it, it kind of is this pillar effect that goes into a circle where, oh, you build this confidence, starts bringing in the right team. That in itself will then start building more confidence, you know? And so people can really feel that and they can see that. And, and I, yeah, I think with the confidence, that's also like certainty, mm -hmm. right? So like clients and, and potential clients, they're looking to follow somebody with certainty. So, mm -hmm. you know, looking at from the perspective of who can we bring certainty and clarity to today? You know, someone needs it to save their health if that's your business or their finances in order to save their business or to save their relationships or to save their sanity. So like you said, it's really our job. It's not our job to sell people. It's our job to be really super clear and really certain on the problem that we solve yes. and support them in a solution that will relieve them through that with our certainty and our clarity, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and that's, that's a great, that's a great way to put it. I think that, um, you know, when I was at, I was just telling you before the call, I was in an event out in LA a couple weeks ago. And, um, I, I met a few people that, that I really connected with, um, that were actually other vendors there. And, um, I went to one of their, uh, speaking things because he came to mind and I one of the things they had is what's your superpower they asked me what is your superpower and I was like my superpower is I can I can tell how healthy a company is just by looking at their marketing material and I realized I can because I can literally look at uh look at a, a company's tangibles their brand their customer and, and their intangibles their customer service their team um, just by having one or two interactions with them. And I can say, ah, like this owner is really not confident and they're trying to sell off of a transaction. They're not trying to sell off of, of off of helping somebody. And that's exciting. Oh my yeah, gosh. That's you, you really can. cool. You, you yeah. can. And, and, and I'm, of course, I'm not a hundred percent accurate on that because there sure. are you no know, certain situations. Um, and uh, I was actually talking to a prospect a couple weeks ago and um, this prospect went with uh, a, a competitor of a, a business that we're opening here pretty soon, uh, more of a, a secondary business um, that we're opening. But uh, um, he was working for this company, and this company used to be owned by a very large uh, influencer in the athletic space. And so I'm not going to say their names, but you may know of, of who they are. And he was telling me – he was telling me um, – their systems. And he's like, yeah, you know, they get on a call and, and they, they, they push you and they try to help us with sales and they try to help us with, you know, but he's like, we're already good with sales. And I'm like, so it sounds like to me that that company really wasn't, they were what I would consider. They weren't really a confident company. They were all about the transactions because they weren't leading by example. And they were basically selling to the wrong audience because they were basically working with these these gym owners that were making about five hundred thousand dollars a year, and they're like, "Oh, now all our time goes into dealing with unqualified leads all day instead of training." And I'm like, "So you basically just they they just basically switched your job from you know doing the training to being on calls that don't even sell all day. Like that's that's not what that that does just doesn't seem right, you know and uh, so right away, just hearing about their customer service really was like, hmm, there's, 
there's a problem which leads to my third pillar, which is contribution. Mm -hmm. Um, They weren't really contributing to the common good of everyone the best way they can, you know, and that's, and that's really what I consider the three pillars. That last one is contribution, which is all about, you know, just what I said, it's, it's your ability to want to contribute to something that you're passionate about and something that you're really, you know, that you can help because you're really good at that one or two things, you know, and, uh, one of the the tips I usually give to a lot of personal brands when they're just starting out is I'll say, all right, I know you need to make money, but I want you to, I want you to shift your mindset a little bit when you're jumping on these calls with, with individuals. And I still have to do it as a practice all the time. Cause I'm a chatterbot. I just like to chat. And so I could just go on calls with, with prospects all day and just chat all day about their business and be like, all right, have a good day. Um, and never but, have uh, a call to action. <laughs> and not have a call to action. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, I just want you to, instead of really thinking about that end goal of of selling them, I want you to switch your mindset and just think, how can I help them? How how can I? Because there's nothing wrong with, you know, saying, I'm sorry, I just can't help you. It's not, contri- contribution doesn't mean that you're doing something for free or you're, um, doing something cheap. If you really value what you're contributing for, and it makes a huge impact to the audience that you're serving, then that's contribution in its finest. Money is just a transactional element that we use for trade. So, um, and there is energy passed back and forth with it, but just think about it in that way when you're on these calls and that in itself will help help you get out of that rat race of Oh, I just need to make that next sale because what happens? You think about it so much, you get eager, you don't make the sale, you don't really help the client. And if you do, they the retention rate's low, you know, and they end up leaving in two or three months, you know. And so you want to be there for your customer. And that's what it really uh really means to contribute. And so back to those three pi- three pillars, you know, you have connection, confidence, and contribution. And uh I would say that ways that I have really um, implemented in my life, um, I really use from a connection standpoint as I started to develop uh, my personal values. Um, I I push that onto my team and anyone that I hire at this point. I'm very big on, I tell every single person um, that hi- that we hire that, hey, I want you to have some sort of personal time for yourself. I want you to, if you love horseback riding, if you love, you know, hanging out with your family, I want you to make sure you have that because life isn't just about doing the work. And funny enough, they, I, they work harder because they have more time, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and it allows them to like free up the brain space into something else, maybe different yes. creative for them. So they mm-hmm. come back refreshed and ready to rock and roll versus like flatlining because they're, they just don't have anything left in that Mm -hmm. area. Right. Yeah. I love it. Uh, we could definitely talk forever and ever, Zach. Um, (laughs) but I would love for you to kind of share, uh, what your gift is for our audience today and what is the best way for people to stay in touch with you, especially if you want to reach out and be like, Hey, would you look at my brand and be able to like, tell me right off the bat what's going on? (laughs) Oh yeah. So I, I can give you, uh, you know, multiple things then be, we do have a download that I, that I, uh, that I gave you the link for. Um, and that is, that is, um, a worksheet that we developed within one of our courses, which is all about mindset. Um, we do have multiple more courses coming out over the years. Um, but for the time being, we really wanted to focus on the one that everyone thought was going to be the most unpopular one, because I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't care if you think it's unpopular mindset is 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 going to be the key to everything. And so we have a personal development course, which really helps people develop as a leader and a self leader. Um, and within that course, we have a whole bunch of work. We're really big on on helping people work on their critical thinking. So we have a whole bunch of worksheets in there. Um, We have given one away for free within the third module of our course, which is the part of the personal development side, which also has the grit scale in it. And so 
It's all about people really finding if they're at that place um, early on in their business um, or at even the valley of death period like I was where they're like, oh, hey, like, how do I get to that next phase? How do I really focus on one thing? Um, really utilizing it to kind of figure out what your your why, like, why do you want you want to do it? Not your brand, not not your not your business for the money, but why do you want to do this? And so you can kind of go down and find a, a, a starting point to uh, really setting that goal for you. So that will be a handout down below. Um, we also, if they just click into the download section, um, there is actually a brand, uh, a brand audit download as well. So they can download that. And that's exactly what you said. It's really just a really quick, survey type questionnaire that, that scores them scores where they're at in their business and they can easily just say okay they're great they're medium or they need some work you know and so they can download that as well if they wish to kind of see where they're at within the the stage of of branding perfect all right so we'll definitely have the link to that in the show notes my last question for you what is a takeaway or a memorable note you'd like to leave our audience with today Don't be afraid to write. You know, I think one of the biggest impactful things that I did um, at this stage of my business is get away from the computer screen and sit down and just being able to write down my thoughts, write down my social media posts, write down my takeaways for the day, um, even my um, gratitude in the mornings. And I think that being able to brain dump stuff down on paper and yes you can use one of those digital notepads too I just don't I, I it's better than typing because typing becomes too natural for people I really want people to think um but going down and writing made such a huge impact on me being able to get out of the hustle and bustle mode and be able to allow my my brain to slow down and really start to think again perfect perfect Thank you so much for being with us today. And I want to thank our audience for joining us on another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm excited for you to take all of these lessons, all of these resources that you've learned here today, start implementing them and create even more impact in your world. Until next time, have an outstanding rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Creating Powerful Impact podcast. If you are a successful coach, speaker, author, or thought leader who would like to be on this program, simply visit creatingpowerfulimpact.com forward slash guest. If you are someone who got something out of this interview, would you please do me a favor and share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on your socials. Also, if you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag creating powerful impact. I love seeing all of your posts and great guest selections. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and they really mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more about us? Head on over to our website, graceandeaseproductions.com or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for Grace and Ease Productions on your favorite platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.